Welcome back to my channel. This is Brian Kafferke, continuing the series Python Programming for Beginners. This is lesson six, float and complex numbers. Let's jump in. Where are we going to go in this particular talk? I'm going to start with what is a float data type? We'll do a little demo around that. And then we'll talk about what is a complex or imaginary number. We'll do a little demo around that too. So what is a float? A float really is any number that has a decimal place in Python. Some languages have a decimal type and a float, but Python just has a float. So a float has two parts. It has sort of the whole number portion, and then it has the numbers after the decimal, the decimal portion. Now, either one of these can be zero, but there's a placeholder at least of the decimal point. So you might have something like 0 0.1234, or you might have uh, 1234.0. But it is being notated within Python that this is a decimal, and you'll always see that sort of decimal point being displayed. So when you need to include a number with a decimal portion, you'll be using a float in Python. I also want to point out something that, while you won't use it probably yourself directly, is scientific notation. When you get into really large values for a float, Python will sometimes display it in what's called scientific notation. I'll show you what that looks like, but basically it multiplies by an exponent because it can't fit the whole thing in. So it's a way of shortening the number so it can display it. I'm going to show you because you may see it and then be scratching your head. What does that mean? So I thought it's worth taking a look. So let me toggle over. Um, so a way to get to idle, I didn't show this in my last video, is if you go in Windows at least, and you go to where the path is in the file explorer, you can just type in CMD there, and you're dropped into right where you need to be for this particular lesson. So if you go in there and you find where your files are if you downloaded them and unzipped them, then you can go here, and then you just have to type in idle. Idle is actually the last name of Eric Idle, right, from Monty Python, which is what the Python programming language is named after. And I'm gonna go in here, and I have a recent file so I'm going to go in here and bring up the float. And let's walk through this program. Now, one thing I always try to do is I talk a little about comments. This is called a doc string. You have triple quotes and then any number of lines of text, whatever you want, and then you just end the triple quotes. So that's a multi-line comment called a doc string in Python. So the simplest and probably very common use of a float would be something like this. I'm creating a variable like price and I'm saying it's equal to 12.95. So it's a dollar amount, right? And it's going to, in this case, it would have a fixed 0.95. However, one of the kind of challenging facts with floats is, even though you know it should always be two decimal places, the float's going to always be calculating out to whatever decimal places it thinks it needs. So here we have price is 12.95. And let's imagine that we have this thing, a discount rate, which is 0.0575. That would really equate to 5.75%, right? So the idea is we've got a discount. And this is not unusual if you were, say, working on some sort of an order system or something online, right? And we have, we want to calculate the discount amount. We're going to do that by saying take the price, multiply it, right? We use the asterisk means multiply. Multiply it by the discount rate, and that's going to give us the amount of the discount. Then we have to apply a tax, right? So let's assume the state tax rate is 0 0.07 or 7%. We're going to calculate the tax amount, how much they're actually going to pay in tax, as a price times the tax rate. And I want to do a demo here, which I mentioned before, right? Let me just, uh, this thing here, a huge number. <laughs> the idea there is I want to get a number that's so large that Python's not going to be able to display it to you easily, so it's going to use scientific notation just to kind of show you how that works. So what's the output going to be for this, Brian? Good question. Uh, so what we have here is the output is going to print out the original price as that price variable. We're going to also confirm using the type function. Uh, we're going to use type and then pass in the variable price to see what type is it. So the type function is actually kind of useful. If you're working in a program, you're trying to figure out, is this really you know, a decimal, a, fl a float, is it really maybe an integer or something? The type function can help you to figure that out. And here we're going to get the discount rate, right? we're going to display the rate. 
we're going to display the discounted amount we calculated. Here we're going to be showing you the price after the discount supplied, and that's going to be the price minus the discount amount. And one little thing I wanted to demonstrate here too is instead of calculating this value and putting it into yet another variable, we can calculate it on the fly. Python's actually going to take the price and subtract the discount amount before it displays the value. So it's doing it on the fly and then just giving you one value printed and we'll see that in the output. Then we can see here we're printing out the tax rate, tax amount, which we already calculated. And finally, the price after discount and taxes. So sort of net of everything. So the price minus the discount amount, let me see if I can get this whole thing in here, plus the tax amount. So again, it's going to, Python's going to actually run through that entire calculation and only display the final number. And finally, again, I'm going to show that huge number, which is these two numbers multiplied. And notice there's a large decimal part of this because I'm forcing a large number. So let's run this. And we can see there's our original price, and we're confirming the type of the price it says class float. The reason it says class is because Python is an object-oriented language. It does support some other types. I won't get into that. But generally, you're doing things. It's using um, object-oriented programming. And we'll get into that more, but you're going to see the word class a lot. So when we get into object-oriented programming and those concepts, that'll make more sense to you. But basically, a class means an object type, in this case, float. So discount rate is good, our discount amount. And notice how the floats can hold any number of decimals, pretty much. It's pretty pretty fluid. Here we're getting the price after the discount. And remember, that was calculated on the fly, right? Let me put this up here. So that was calculated on the fly. We have our tax rate. And we have a tax amount here. And notice, I believe what it's doing here is it's going out further and it's just rounding it up to a one rather than keep displaying. So at some point it wanted to stop doing that. And then you have uh, price after discount and taxes. Again, that was calculated on the fly. And you can see that it's going to any number of decimals. Now, there are functions like a round function that you can use to limit the number of decimal values, how many numbers after the decimal. But if you don't do anything, Python just kind of figures that out what it needs on its own. And the huge amount, <laughs> huge amount here is this one. And you can see, notice it's this two point blah, 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 blah. And then it's E plus 21. So this is exponent, exponential notation. It's, I believe this number raised to the power of 21. And that's because it just can't fit it in. So when you basically overstuff a number, a decimal value into these floats, that you might see something like that. What that means is you just got a really large number. And if it's not an error, which usually when I see them, it means I did something wrong, then uh, you can do things to scale it down. For instance, maybe you divide by a million and state your values as millions or something like that. So you promised imaginary numbers, Brian. Where are they? OK, let me talk about those now. Python calls a certain number complex, which in math is actually called imaginary numbers. I probably have limitations in my background because honestly, I've never used imaginary numbers. I had to look up what they are, but I wanted to make sure I didn't leave it out because it is covered by Python. And the idea, and I had to look this up, so right from Wikipedia, an imaginary number is a complex number that can be written as a real number. And you can see, you know, explaining, basically it's, I guess it's not a concrete real thing, but it has useful applications. That's how I read this. What are they used for? They're used for, again, complex numbers, right? So that's what Python calls them. There are real life applications according to this, electricity, quadratic equations, et cetera, et cetera. Again, I tend to work in the meat and potatoes kinds of applications. I haven't gotten into situations where they're needed. There may be cases in data science somewhere where you, in modeling, maybe you'll use some of these imaginary numbers. I haven't come across them yet, but you might. If you do have use cases, by the way, put a comment down below like, oh yeah, I'd use them here, I'd use it there. I'd be kind of curious when they're used. If you need to, you can do it. So here's our example of using complex numbers. And again, using a doc string at the top to document it. The big thing to notice is to, we're just using the J whenever we want to indicate an imaginary or complex number. That's pretty much it. So I'm using three examples. Here we're adding 3 plus 5J. And here, just 5J by itself. And here's a negative 5J. Again, you can read the description and see how that fits, but basically you're using an imaginary number here, and then we're just going to print out the values, 
And here we'll confirm that we do have a type which is imaginary. So. And notice that when we print it, it actually retains the formatting. It doesn't, in most things, if I said 5 times 10, it would just convert it. Here it doesn't do any kind of conversion to a, a type here, right? It's just going to do this. Uh, so this is what we got. This is from our prior run. Here's our latest run. And finally, we can see, indeed, it is complex. So wrapping up, we looked at what is a float data type, and we learned that it's basically any number that has a decimal side to it, a decimal value. So whole number, period, decimal, and another value. If you have nothing but a decimal value, there's an imaginary zero in front of it, and you might have a whole number that theoretically could have a decimal, so it would be like 1.0. That's still considered a float if you included that zero in assignment. So Python dynamically figures out you want to float. We did a riveting demo around that, and then we looked at complex or imaginary numbers and the fact that we can support those in Python. Don't have a lot of use cases. I gave you the examples there, uh, but again, post in the comments. I'd love to hear what people do with those. Uh, a lot of times I'll cover things that probably aren't used that often, but I want you to be aware of in case you come across it so you're not thrown for a loop when you see something. That's about it. So please like, share, subscribe. Um, if you subscribe, don't forget to turn on notifications. There are two reasons for notifications turning on. One is so you'll get notified of new videos, but also if you put comments in and I respond, I think it requires the notifications for you to automatically get word back that I responded to something you posted. That's it. I'm pulling for you. We're all in this together. Thank you.